Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday for March 15th, 2019. This is paralyzing Azure Logic App workloads using the split on expression. And this is of course, Middleware Friday. Now, the content of this particular episode can be found on serverlessnotes.com. If you haven't been there yet, I highly recommend that you do. There's a series of tips predominantly written by myself and Steph Jan Wiggers related to Azure Functions, Azure Logic Apps, Event Hubs, and Service Bus. And certainly the one that we're going to talk about today shows up there. I think it's always sort of interesting to, to consume content in a video format. So that's part of the reason why I'm going to record this for Middleware Friday as well. Now we talked about this last time briefly, but uh, if you missed last episode, uh, do check out Integrate 2019. There are some early bird pricing going on right now. This is for both the UK and London and in Redmond, Washington, USA. And I've been lucky to be, have been selected to speak at both of these. Very much looking forward. Uh, the session that I'm gonna be talking about is called Azure Logic Apps versus Microsoft Flow. Why not both? And so we'll, we'll share a little bit more details around that the closer that the conferences get, but uh, do check it out. This is the place to be for integration content. And certainly with two locations, you can choose the locale that makes the most sense for you. All right, so the topic for today, scale workloads using split on. So as I mentioned before, uh, here is the URL uh, for serverless tips. And this is the specific one that we're talking about today. And the whole reason for this particular topic is how can you actually scale out Logic Apps? And especially when Logic Apps is known for, for being built upon HTTP, how can you go ahead and scale out requests? So for example, when you had uh, BizTalk and you have this idea of like batching and debatching different messages and you could debatch a, a message that say had an array of records and you, what you would do is you would debatch that to essentially the message box and then you would have subscriptions against that specific message type, like an envelope schema. And then what would happen is you would have many different orchestrations running in parallel because you know, you've broken apart that message. So naturally with Logic Apps, we don't have a message box. We do have service bus, but in this case, we're talking about just Logic Apps natively. But we do have this ability to essentially do something similar where we can you know, debatch a series of records and then have Logic Apps process them in parallel instead of uh, sequentially executing those records. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna have two orchestrations. We're gonna have a publisher orchestration that is gonna simply do a query against SQL Server. It's gonna retrieve five records. Now we're going to then send those five records as a complete message, a single message to a Logic App. Now you would expect that all of those five records would show up in one message, uh, but that's not true. The orchestra, the Logic Apps engine is gonna actually break these records apart using this split on expression, and we're gonna see five Logic Apps spin up in parallel. Now this number five is completely arbitrary. Uh, I'm just using it for illustration purposes. It's, it's something where it clearly demonstrates that we're scaling out without it you know, being overly burdensome and having tens of, of Logic App instances to try to debug and work through. So let's head over to the Azure portal and take a closer look. All right, so here we are, we're in the Azure portal. We've got Logic App set up here. This is going to be my publisher Logic App. Let's just take a very quick look at it. We're just gonna run recurrence. We're gonna get rows, we're gonna get the top five rows, and then we're gonna go ahead and call a Logic App. And in this case, it, it's really my consumer Logic App, which we're gonna take a, a quick look at here. So we'll head over to the consumer. And here's our logic app. Nothing too exciting. We're gonna get an HTTP request. I'm not imposing any sort of JSON schema. And we're gonna simply take that message body and pump it to a request bin URL. So let's go ahead, let's run this. So it's done. So we had a single instance, 5.16 p.m. And let's head over to our consumer. 
and we'll just hit refresh and we will see at 5 16 p.m. we'd one two three four five logic gaps which is exactly what we would expect now you might be asking yourself okay how did you actually go ahead and turn one call into five calls and the secret is in this code behind expression so right here there is a split on and what, what we're saying is split on the trigger body and then basically the value you know this arbitrary well this this I guess message attribute called value so let's go ahead and just take a closer look at our message shape So this is back in our publisher. Let's take a look at our output. And really it is here. It's this value array. So we've got a JSON message with an array of values. And that's essentially what we've done is we've basically said trigger body value and we're gonna split on it. And then what the Logic App Engine is gonna do is for each of these messages, break it apart and send it to a new instance of the logic app itself. So if we head over to our request bin, let's hit refresh. And one minute ago, we can see that we've got uh, a series of five different calls. And you'll notice that these are individual records. So these are, this isn't a batch of records that have been sent. This is the individual. And we can see customer ID, you know, being sent. Uh, these are all different, different values. So there you have it, something so simple, yet so powerful. And that's what's really interesting about logic apps. And in this case, it's, it's a way to scale out your processing of your messages. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about that. Now, uh, you may be watching this on YouTube. Perhaps you're watching it on Integration User Group. That's okay as well. Uh, but just so you know, we do have all of the Middleware Friday videos showing up on YouTube. Feel free to like and subscribe. And you may notice that there will be a bit of a tape delay in terms of some of these episodes showing up on YouTube, but we wanna give you the ability to watch where it's most convenient for you. And naturally this is on the BizTalk360 channel, so there's a whack of videos that show up here, but a, a great resource, probably the most comprehensive resource on the internet for Microsoft integration related content. So if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check that out on youtube.com slash user slash biztalk360. So thanks for tuning in to this edition of Middleware Friday. I will catch you next week. That'll be Steph Jan doing it and then I'll pick it up the following week. But take care and have a great weekend and we'll see you soon on Middleware Friday. Whistle like to the Caucasian people. My teacher scratches all my records